Shastadown. come from a strong, loving family with a lot of cultural diversity. Uh, I come from a family of love and support. I come from a loving family. Uh, I come from a family that works a lot and really caring. I come from a family of two moms and a sister and four pets. I come from a family of poverty. I come from Durham, a single parent family. I come from a small town in Mexico called Michoacan. Disrespectful people make me angry. I can go on and on about that. Whenever I feel cheated, which is kind of a lot because, you know, like, I deserve everything and more. Uh, ignorance. As teenagers are just slightly shorter, slightly angrier adults. The, the sheer amount of work that you get, especially like homework, um, I, can't, I, I can't stand that. I don't like how underfunded it feels a lot of the time. You get to a certain point, you need to learn how to let go with some of us, you know what I mean? I feel like they're trying to hold on too tight to us because we're getting older. I like how large and diverse Jordan is, of like having so many different people. It's basically its own small town in a lot of ways. I love my brother and I love my dog a lot. And I love being outside. If, like when we are outside, I just, I just feel free. Uh, just spending good quality time with my friends, like 3 a.m. in the cookout parking lot, having that deep conversation. That's where I'm at peace. So reading books has always been something that I love to do because I love to hear and see other people's stories. Um, and I like to tell stories as well. So I think writing a book would help me clarify some of the things that I think about. I hope to get out all the feelings that I've been holding in for such a long time. Fiction, you could have <laughs> stuff like dragons or worms or dragon worms. Like, it was always been my dream to be a writer. Like anytime my parents asked me, what did you want to be? I want to be a writer. Because I always felt like that writing gave me a sense of being able to express myself in a way that you wouldn't be able to express towards people. And, I, and it stuck with me throughout my whole entire life. And I just was like, it's what I want to do. It's always been my dream. I tend to not finish things I start and I think a novel will be a really great way to help me with that habit because I have to keep writing it for the whole year and I think that would be really nice for a change and a challenge. I've always liked writing. I mean, I've always loved, you know, sports, reading sports articles, but also loved um, reading like this the back like stories of people and like seeing how other people around the world how they live and kind of the emotions of everyone else and kind of getting into a head that's not mine the work that i do in here is my own you know and it speaks for who i am so it's a little intimidating but it's also liberating because people don't really give you the opportunity to like speak on who you are and what you care about it's definitely like stressful and it's something that's like always on the back of your mind and it's just like nagging at you, nagging at you, but you just have to like keep going and um, I don't believe in giving up. When I'm writing, I, I kind of transport myself to this world I created and I'm really, I'm making this world. So I decide what happens, I decide what's going on and I feel like it's making me more creative and it's also like helping me see different perspectives in life because I'm writing from another perspective clearly that's not my own. I've seen adventures through kind of the characters eyes who actually do live eventful lives and whatnot going and slaying dragons and wizards and whatnot where this is, I mean I'm gonna say real life's kind of boring. It's definitely one of the longest term projects I've ever worked on and I'm like excited to see how I change and how like the methods that I use while writing changes as I learn by doing. I think I think it is freedom, like doing be able to do what I want to do and to be able to explore and have new experiences. The main thing is I just wanted to get like something that's 
that I've kind of stored in me for like three years. I just wanted to get it out. It's a lesson because you're not always gonna have someone there to hold your hand. And I feel like you're teaching me that now, so when I get older, I won't have to really stress about it more. I already get used to it. I just think it's a really good experience and like not a lot of people get to say they wrote a book at 16, 17, so I think that'll be a big accomplishment. I literally never finish them because <laughs> I always like jump onto something else and I'm like, okay, that can wait, I'll come back to it this will be my long-term project. And then you can imagine, this is my new long-term project, that one can wait. As a child growing up, I never read books. The very first book I read was sixth grade. It was Captain Underpants. And since then, I haven't really read any book until sophomore and junior year. And taking creative writing one, and like falling in love with poetry and st short stories, really, created a passion for writing and so I've been writing since and I've been improving I've been reading books and just being able to write a book it's very motivating and just, I call it I don't know it's something that I really want to accomplish and it's and I think it's going to be the most important accomplishment of my high school career Looking at how you grow from trauma, I think is really interesting because trauma is different for everyone. I look at it from the perspective of this is part of who I am, you know, and that I have, to, I have to deal with it at some point. So whether it's through writing about it every day or thinking about it subconsciously, you know, that thing has to a certain extent defined who I am. And if I don't figure out how to live with it or how to move around it, then it'll consume me. My book is kind of like talking about um, sexual assault and rape cases, not only in teenage girls, but in like all women and how they're dealt with and how they're not talked about. When you write about things, it helps you take control of your narrative. And so being able to write about my experience through the perspective of someone else that other people might be able to relate to gives me the ability to figure out, well, if this character can do something, then I can too. I am from Liberia, so like the perspective of like Africans and um, African Americans, like I wanna like show that. So it's about a, uh a man from India and his wife coming to America and learning the hardships but the man gets involved in a gang and ends up killing somebody trying to put a roof over his head so it's a whole book about him his regrets and how he's gonna hopefully try to escape it's a pseudo memoir pseudo biography and autobiography my book is about a girl and she has hearing damage and she's having to go through the loss of a family member that's very important to her I got into it because my uncle has hearing damage and I also just lost a family member so I felt like it'd be like I want other people to be like oh it's okay and it's alright to be hurt and have problems and to show those problems to other people. The book that I am writing it's about it's centered around a high school senior. High school senior is a star athlete and he's kind of you know he thinks he's the king of the school everyone looks up to him and he's kind of on the top of the world and then one day he says something that he should not be saying and that's videotaped and captured and for the whole world to see and the video goes around and everyone sees it. I would describe it as an environmentalism book but in, in the perspective of what if mother nature was real. It's kind of weird because I feel like we're kind of competitive like when one of us is getting feedback on our book the other one of us wants to know like what they said about their book. But hers is just so boring, I can't read it. <laughs> no, I'm just joking, she says the same thing about mine. I don't know, she's kind of mean sometimes. Sometimes I could be thinking something and she's thinking the exact yeah. same thing and we say it at the same time. You want people to like your main character. 
but at the same time, I don't want the people to like her necessarily. Yeah, but I don't want you to hate her either. A uh, boy is going to live with his aunt for the summer in the mountains of North Carolina, but like dark forces are acting, mm-hmm. and so he's gonna have to navigate that. I'm writing about like this elderly lady, and she like has to go to a nursing home out of her home. And so she's starting to get like um, mental problems, like she's losing her memories, Alzheimer's. My book is about a girl and she really likes this boy, but she doesn't really know if he likes her back and everyone's telling her about all these bad things he's doing and him himself is like showing her that he's not necessarily a good person, but she's just so blind, she doesn't care. A kid who struggles and doesn't know that his brother's living basically a double life. In the book, I'm trying to incorporate different perspectives of different people, but that all connect, like, but connect them in a way that, like, to prove that people, despite being different, like, they're, they're always connected. And so I think that's a big challenge for me because I don't really, it's not one of those things where you just say, oh, my book is about this, right? It's, it's multiple things and it's, and it's difficult to really put it into words. The comedic freedom I have, I get to come up with something that makes me laugh, and then I just get to go back and add it in perfect context. I don't have to like sit and then, oh, I should have said that. I could have said that. I, I can go back and say that. It's great. Give me a second. <laughs> can we start over? Can we start? <laughs> See, I love being creative because it's my book, so I can I can go anywhere I want. I like to change it up. I can do anything. I think it is a little easier for me because I already know what happens. Yeah. And I don't have to like come up with like a new plot or story or whatever. Yeah, I'd say the most enjoyable part is kind of getting to create my own world and getting to create my own characters. Like I have a lot of fun making these new characters and giving personalities to them and kind of incorporating some of my friends and some of the people I know into the characters to kind of bring them to life. I really was so excited for for this like opportunity to be like do something that I really really this was my dream to do and I get to do it at such a young age like I thought I wouldn't be able to do it till I was like 30 35 40 and I get to do it at like 18 there was no place for me there was no place for people like me who just feels like when they're with their stories it's like the whole world gets brighter you know, teenagers, we have a whole new vocabulary that they don't understand. We, we listen to different music, watch different TV shows. We, you know, the age of technology, we're living a whole another high school experience that at least my parents and all the adults out there, they don't, they don't know how that is and what that's like. It's nice to see how much, like, I've worked and I've created because it kind of is a lot. I think I'm, like, right almost at 15,000 words now. And it's like, oh, wow, I've come so far and I've gotten so much down. And... It's good, it's like something I can be proud of. To have the freedom to write, to just change the story, if I don't like it, I could change it. One big part of me trying to find my identity was that I didn't, I wasn't that good at English. Like I couldn't write English, I couldn't speak English that well, right? And if, I lived in America, right? And so I think because I wasn't able to like speak as clearly as others, that kind of gave me like, I, I felt alienated alienated in a way so um, and I think after writing this book like you know I convinced myself that I do know English right and I can be part of like society American society It's been hard because I got the beginning of the book and I got the end of the book. It's just trying to stick the stuff in the middle. Murder Southern draw, yo, I ain't talking to you. Stop eavesdropping the ball. I be rocking with y'all. I be off of the wall. A pit bull off the leash. I keep locking my jaws. I see a cop at the mall. I see a cop at the vault. Peter taking a fight. I can see the Viking in y'all. One of my I'm like, this is like the jumping point. As long as the mic is involved. Relocated to Cali, but I ain't liking the smog. I'm a Southern North Star. I be the light in the dark. Be the right in the wrong. I be the reason the bull city feeds me. Bull city grease me. Bull city needs me. Every
Everywhere I go, I got that bull city greeting. That's why they throw the horns when the bull city sees. It's the North Cat, baby. I'm a boss. And it's like. I think once you find it, it gets easier, but like right now, it's like really hard. If I don't finish school this year and get make it to college, I know I'm going to be disappointed. I feel like nothing's really easy as a high schooler. Everything has to be, well, it doesn't have to be, but a lot of things in my life are kind of hard. Yeah, you have to find balance between school and like work, work, regular life. I'm not good at focusing on one thing. It was just repeatedly waking up. Um, and not being like noticing that my grades were failing and that my relationships were crumbling apart and not really uh, being too close with my teachers anymore. Um, and it was just like not feeling happy anymore. Um, and just really seeing or imagining what it would be like if I continued doing what I was doing. Yeah, I, I hit a pretty big wall. Um, the most challenging part is when you keep writing and then you just forget where you're going. You don't know where to go from there. So I'ma use my vocal cords to open doors and show the force of human will. The truest skill is fighting back with open arms. It's scary. As you know, I gotta deal with the real world sooner or later. I was like in my room one day and I overheard like, once I go to college, it's gonna stop. But like, she loves working, so I doubt, I doubt it. So like, kind of making me like not want to go, like just not leave her alone and stuff. Cause you know it's your mom. You just want to like protect her and stuff. She says she's not gonna miss me, but like I know deep down she's really gonna miss me. I'm a little nervous right now because I don't know what my future holds. I haven't heard back from all the schools that I want to hear back from. Um, so I know that whatever is in my future will be good for me, but it's just a matter of figuring out what that is. Like the biggest worries in my right, life right now is oh, what my friends are doing this weekend and what girls are talking to me. Like that's, I mean, it seems big to me now, but I know like deep in my head, like these are just small things. And I'd say the hardest thing is, you know, looking to the future, looking at senior year and beyond that and thinking, wow, like this carefree life I'm living right now, it's coming to an over, it's coming to a close soon and that I need to kind of focus on where I want to go to college and kind of look beyond that. Well, I hear back from the only college I applied to in six days, so I guess right now I'm just waiting to get in and then if I don't, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Living up to expectations that people set on me, what I should do, Part of it, I'm excited, you know, because I'm independent. I guess you could say I'm on my own, but then again, I'm scared because of that independence. So, yeah. Both. Both. But more fear than excitement. Well, no, I mean, more, more excitement, excitement than, than fear. fear. Yeah. Because, yeah. Cause I'm just really excited. Um, I think that it's been really helpful for me this year to have an outlet to express what I've been feeling for a long time now um, and to feel like my voice is actually being heard by other people. I'd say the characters that I made, I'm really proud of like really creating these whole other people, whole new world of people that I feel like I almost know. I could have cried. I could have like, it has been my, my, truly my dream to write my own book. It almost felt like I was a mother or something. It was really exciting because like I had worked so long on this thing. It was almost a whole year and now I get to see what it actually looks like and it made me really proud. My writing style has improved a lot. You never really notice it but it, it does get a lot better as you continue to write. So. It feels, feels good. Um, my dad didn't really he dropped out of elementary school. My mom, she wanted to be a lawyer, but uh, because of funds and because we wanted to move to the United States uh, for me to get a better opportunity, um, it was, it's kind of, it's kind of, a comp I, I, f I feel very proud. Um, and I know they're proud of me um, because I did this for them.
definitely figure out the concept you want to write about. Maybe not necessarily the plot or exactly what you want the story to look like, but whatever story you are trying to tell, figure that out first before you decide how you're going to go about writing it because it will make, it'll make things a lot clearer for you. I'd say have a pick an idea that you love. Um, don't go in with something that you're not fully passionate about, but if you have an idea that you love and you have time to commit to it, then go at it um, with, all, with all you got. And sometimes things can change and you can get a new idea while you're in the middle of writing it and if you can make sure to implement that idea without harming the story and make it work, then I'd say go for it. So I'm going to UNC Chapel Hill. Um, I got the Carolina Covenant Scholarship, the Johnson Scholarship, and I got invited to Honors Carolina. I'm going to be going to the Air Force. I'm going to Meredith now, which is really exciting, um, and I love the campus, and I love everything about the school, so I'm extremely excited. I mean, I see myself not in the United States. I, I want to do something out of in another country with, like, diplomatic relationships or, or uh, uh, foreign policy, something in that nature. Um, I'm feeling good, uh, relieved that it's all over. Like, of course, like, I'm sad junior year's coming to a close, but it's been long, it's been long, it's been hard, so I'm, I'm just excited for summer. Mm, excited. And nervous, both. Life is always something, something's never the same. I wonder if he'll see again, I wonder what's his name. People change so quickly and there's so much left to do I wonder if I'm doing right